Hello, hello, you beautiful souls. Welcome to your morning messages with me, Michelle. And on my channel, we talk all things life, love, spirituality, how to handle tough times, how to handle our spiritual awakening and all the different stages. There is an intense energy this week. I don't know if you guys are all feeling it. Uh, last week was a week of rest. And this week is amping up and it's feeling like a little push, like we need to do things, push out of our comfort zone. So in order to kind of balance out that energy, I feel called to read some affirmations for you guys on this lovely, wonderful, warm Monday morning. I went on a really early drive this morning around six and it was so beautiful out. I got to see the sun come up. So I'm teaching myself <laughs> how to slow down during this push energy. So if you've been feeling it, you're not alone. It's definitely real. And um, we're gonna slow it down this morning with some affirmations. So settle in, relax, and just close your eyes and listen to these beautiful words that I wrote just for you. All right, a few deep breaths to start in through your nose, out through your mouth. Here we go. You are love. You are unique. You are special. You are beautiful. You are safe. You are powerful. You are infinite. You are kind. You are whole. You are endless. You are a spirit. You are not your body. You are eternal. You are a light. You are one with God. You have access to anything you desire. You create your reality. You attract love. You are magnetic. You inspire others. You serve the world. You share your gifts. You honor yourself. You honor others. You cherish your body. You nurture yourself. You breathe in light. You heal others with your light. You matter. You grow, you evolve. Your love extends beyond time and space. My love for you is eternal. Our love grows stronger each day. I am always in your heart. You feel my love always. Your heart dances with joy. You are so grateful for your life. You are ready for this day. You are ready for all the miracles that await you. Open your arms to receive. Relax your mind, get out of your head and into your body. Tune in to what your body is telling you. What feels good? What feels really good? Go there often. Enjoy this day. Breathe in the beauty. Take this energy with you. Have a wonderful day. Take a nice big deep breath. I love affirmations. All right, Archangel Michael, Archangel Metatron, please bless the space. Please open, open sacred space. Please allow the messages to come through that we all need to hear today. Please let us know what the energy is this week, what we need to do, how we need to relax, how we could serve more. Please teach us to get out of our egos. Please teach us to not try to force our lives to happen. Remind us that we wait for what is supposed to come to us and we trust that it's coming 
we don't push, we don't grab the wheel, allow us to be calm and patient <laughs> in this waiting phase. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. All right, loveys, let's see what page we get. <laughs> this day is a day of completion. Each moment of my life is perfect, whole, and complete. With God, nothing is ever unfinished. I am one with infinite power, infinite wisdom, infinite action, and infinite oneness. I awaken with a sense of fulfillment, knowing that I shall complete all that I undertake today. Each breath is full and comes to completion. Each scene I see is complete in itself. Each word I speak is full and complete. Each task I undertake or each portion of that task is completed to my satisfaction. I do not struggle alone in the wilderness of life. I release all belief in struggle and resistance. I know and affirm that I am one with the infinite power and therefore my way is made easy and smooth. I accept assistance from my many unseen friends who are always ready to lead me and guide me as I allow them to help. Everything in my life, in my work falls into place easily and effortlessly. Calls are completed on time, letters are received and answered, projects come to fruition, others cooperate, Everything is on time and in perfect divine order. All is complete and I feel good. This is a day of completion. I declare that it is so. My world is powerful and that which I declare and believe to be so is so and so it is. And on the left it says, loving and approving of yourself, creating a space of safety within you, trusting, deserving and accepting yourself could create an organized mind attract more loving relationships and bring about a new job and even allow your body weight to normalize. What a perfect message. I feel like that relates to my affirmations and my prayer before we started about kind of like, how do we rest in the waiting phase? If you know you're, you're in a transition and you're going somewhere else and you're needing to do different work or you're just you know that you're you're going somewhere, but you don't know where that is yet. The waiting phase can be the toughest. Um, and life, honestly, life will always bring you your next steps. It will come through in a text, in an email, through a stranger, um, a recommendation. So hold the line, know that something is coming this week and it's going to change the, the course of your life. It's going to redirect you. And in the meantime, we have to know that everything is complete. Everything is in alignment. We are on the right path. So if you're spending every minute, every second thinking you should be somewhere else or you should be doing more, that's when you need to pause, take a deep breath and say, I'm exactly where I'm meant to be. I will be guided to go somewhere else when the time is right. I don't need to take action right now. I am okay. All is perfect. Everything always works out for me. If that's the one phrase that you could repeat all the time, that's what I would recommend. Everything is always working out for me. Every conversation is always meant for me. Every hiccup in the road is perfect. It's all here for you. Okay, so let's open up some cards. And let's see what messages from God we have today. I have my Course in Miracles for whoever needs some miracles today. Take these off, don't need them anymore. Okay, what messages from God do we need to hear? Thank you. Love holds no grievances. And it says the holiest of all the spots on earth is where an ancient hatred has become a present love. So where there was once hate, now there's love. So we're being called to transmute fear, anger, frustration, hate, all of that. We're, we're being called to move it into love. How can we see this differently? How can we find compassion? How can we find forgiveness for ourselves and for others and uh, situations that we might feel may have been unfair? I also just got a message that some of us are being called to heal family traumas. So this is a, a huge healing time for a lot of people. So if you feel like you're really tired or you're sick, 
sickness is a huge sign that you're needing to heal because sometimes we won't rest on our own. So the universe makes us get sick so that we can lay on the couch and we can do our healing. And then thoughts start to surface and we're like, oh my gosh, like I'm really sad about this. I haven't cried about it in a while. That's how you know that the universe made you get sick so that you could feel that emotion and release it. Okay, let's use my deck and then we're gonna do an animal deck. I picked a card for myself earlier and I got the lamb card, which is all about a message or a text message or um, somebody coming to your door with a message. Now we have the gazelle. Observe your surroundings. What or who is draining your energy? Take inventory and then take fast action to pull your energy back. So I see this as like, don't give away your energy. If you're obsessing about something, that's when you need to be patient and calm and say, I'm not going to think about this right now. I will be guided and I'm not going to spend my time obsessing about how somebody's driving me nuts or how this place is really annoying. I'm just going to rest and be like, I know everything will come to me when the time's right. I'm not going to sit in, in anguish and frustration. So it's really love holds no grievances you have no grievances you are just finding the good everywhere you are all right let's do another one side note my hair is looking super dark i think it's because i need a tan i did not dye it but it's looking pretty black oh <laughs> I love these cards. I like that I wrote them because it just is how I talk to myself in my head. It says, yay, you've come so far. Pause, take a breath. Do one thing today to celebrate your growth. You are a warrior. <laughs> yay. Such a glimpse into my head. I'm such a nerd. All right, animal card. Here we go. Thank you. Here's the whale card. If you're watching this and you've been following me on Instagram for more than three years, I guess, you know that I always go and stay in this cute little tiny cottage in Cape Cod. I started going there, I guess it was three years ago. And then when we were remote teaching, I went up there and I was like, this is the first time in my career I'm ever able to teach from home. So why not go somewhere cool? So I went to this cute little cottage in Cape Cod that my friend Jenna owns. And the first time I went there was for my daughter's birthday. And I went whale watching by myself. So I tried to, I've always tried to do really cool things on her birthdays. Um, and she will be 10 this year. I have to start planning what I'm going to do this year. Uh, the first few years I did a lot of things alone, but I've been feeling called to like share the experience with other people. But anyway, so I went whale watching and it was the most awesome experience the whole ride on the boat like we were not seeing any whales we're like what the heck and I immediately was like Micah mommy came all this way <laughs> I love whales I love the water I just want to like see something really cool you guys literally two minutes later there was five fin whales which they're huge and they were just circling our boat and like I was literally like by myself I had a mask on actually it wasn't three years ago. Yeah, that way, I guess it was 2020. Yeah, because I had a mask on. I had a mask on. Unfortunately, we still had to wear a mask even when we were outside on the boat. But I remember just like crying underneath my mask because I just was like, she responded. Like I asked her for the whales and she responded. So anytime I get the whale card, I always think of my daughter and our connection. And the whale means like you have this deep wisdom in you and you're not afraid to go to the darkness. See how dark it is down here? You are a soul who has traversed some really dark waters and you've made it out to the top, to the sunlight. You've made it up to the light. So life is all about the light and the darkness, right? The shadow. And we have to be willing to face our shadow. We have to be willing to face every single fear in order to transmute it, meaning transform it into fire, into grit and determination. So when we overcome fear in our lives, so say you have a really heavy anxiety-filled moment, and then something is birthed through it. 
a new idea. That anxiety was a beacon for you. It was showing you where you needed growth in your life or where you needed to make a decision. And that is whale energy. You are so strong. You are this huge whale that is graceful and peaceful and you don't panic. You just move through dark times and you're steady as a rock and you just move through and you trust that everything will be okay. And the wisdom that you get from these situations is so powerful. And I know for me, I, before I created my mindfulness programs back in 2020, it was actually, <laughs> that's so funny. Um, my guides just reminded me that when I went whale watching, I think it was the next day I got the call, um, a message. It's kind of like the lamb card. You get a text message. It's an idea for a new job, or you get this huge opportunity. I must've got like 50 hearts sent to me via DMS. Cause my daughter sends me hearts wherever I go. So I was seeing hearts in Cape Cod. I was getting DMs nonstop and I, I was journaling it all. And I'm like, universe, what are you trying to tell me? Why are you sending me so many hearts in the last two days? Then I went whale watching the next day, right before Micah's birthday, I got a DM on Instagram of a girl asking me if I wanted to create a virtual mindfulness program. And I about shit my pants because I was like, I don't know how to film. I don't know what I'm doing. And this is before I filmed readings. I only did readings on Instagram. And the whale is a sign that something big is coming and you've been through tough times and your breakthrough is so close. So I got that call and I immediately was like, oh my gosh, I have been manifesting no longer teaching in the classroom and wanting to reach more kids with my lessons, but I just didn't know how to do it. And then I get this amazing opportunity to create videos that this company would just sell for me. I wouldn't even have to do anything. I just had to create it give it to them. And then they would sell it to schools all over the U S. So currently now, you know, what is it? Two years later, I am in 340 different schools. So how cool is that? And it was brought to me. So when we talk about, you know, you guys needing change in your life and the waiting phase and something's coming, your magic is coming. It just takes time. And I remember being quarantined in March and in April, knowing I needed to do something. We all did, right? But I specifically was in my life going, I know I'm not supposed to be in the classroom anymore. What am I supposed to be doing, Spirit? Please talk to me. I don't know where I'm supposed to go in my life. And I would just wake up every day and I had to just sit with it. And I remember posting something on Instagram telling people it's not time yet. It's not time yet. And then July rolls around and boom, my life completely changed after that call completely changed. Everything shifted. And that's what's coming. That's the energy I get when I see the whale. So your life is about to completely change. Stay in a high vibe. Do not panic. Just be very open to any messages that come your way and get excited because you've been waiting for this change. You've been, you've been wanting a better life for yourself. And it says, yeah, you've come so far, pause, take a breath, do one thing today to celebrate your growth. Totally reminiscing on my trips to Cape Cod. I went up there so many times. I was just getting my Jeep and go for like a long weekend. And my friend Jenna was so great. She would always let me use it. And I would always promote it on Instagram. And then she would get all these renters because of it. It's like I was getting paid to just travel. <laughs> and promote on Instagram. It was awesome. And her cottage was so stinking cute. If you guys have ever wanted to like stay in a tiny home, you have to go check out the cottages. It's called Brewster, B-R-E-W-S-T-E-R, -E Brewster Cottages. If you look them up on Instagram, she just sold them to this really nice girl. So you can still rent them. All right, we have the lizard, number 38. Dream the world into being. I'm gonna read this one to you all. Ah, it's so peaceful here. I'm really grateful. Okay glasses. 
my stomach's growling. Okay, when was the last time you basked in the sun and allowed yourself to daydream, to imagine what, what might be and who you might become? Lizard spirit appears when you are called to let your imagination flow and dream something new. Inspiration is available to you now if you are willing to slow down, let your eyes close a little, allowing ideas to dance in your head. What might come into being if you were to pursue your dream? How might you grow and expand if you allowed yourself to dare to believe in the impossible? Making it possible first in your dreaming mind and then in the world as you co-create with spirit. Give in to the power of imagination and soon your dream will become clearer. The steps will reveal themselves. And what was, what was once, oh, yikes, sorry, totally skip sentences. Dream it and be it. Spirit asks you to dare to dream big. And then there's a protection message. It says, have you been allowing your imagination to run amok and dream up a nightmare that seems to have come true? Fear not. For whatever dreaming you did in the past can change today as you dream anew. Wake up from the perception that everything is wrong. Lizard spirit asks you to open your eyes and consciously dream a better dream. What would it look like to already have what you desire and be the one to wish for it? How might it feel to work towards co-creating this new dream as a reality in the world of the senses, drawing it out of the world of dreams and building it in the world of form? trust in your ability to dream anew honor it today i just got a message i was doing a reading last night um with one of my favorite starbucks employees <laughs> um i gave him my card at starbucks the other day and he messaged me because he was going through a tough time and he was like hey can we sit down on zoom and pull some cards i was like absolutely and he had never sat down and just asked himself what he truly wanted he he's thought about it in his head um but when he was speaking it he got really emotional and it was really beautiful because he just was like you could see how much he was yearning for it and I told him like we have to write down what we want we have to believe it's possible we have to understand that like we are the creators of our reality but here's the big part but <laughs> It's a co-creation. We can't just demand that we're going to go where we want to go. We have to get the guidance from spirit and from the universe. And we have to surrender. And if we're in a space that doesn't feel good, we have to let go and say, all right, spirit has me here for a reason. Spirit, show me why you have me here. I will be of service. Where will you have me go? What will you have me do? What will you have me say? And to whom? and we just completely surrender to the process. So here's an example of how I had to surrender in my life. I left my one teaching job and I had like a two month span of panic because I was new to this spiritual path. I didn't know what I was doing. It was like a, a healing crisis. <laughs> I quit my job, my, I felt the call, I had nothing lined up. I panicked, I asked my dad, I don't know what I'm doing, can I work for you? I started doing like accounts payable stuff literally the worst anxiety every day going there. I was in complete panic. It was terrible. I didn't understand the process. I'm like, Michelle, what are you doing with your life? What are you doing? And then I panicked and tried to get my job back. That didn't work. The universe slammed the door. And then I applied for another teaching job at another high school. Didn't get it. Another guy in that interview really liked me and was just like, oh, I think you'd be great for my school. He was like an alternative school. Didn't get it. And then darkest before dawn, right before, like two weeks before school's about to start, I get a DM or a Facebook message from an old friend, teacher friend. And he was like, hey, you should work at this school. And I was, I was panicked at that moment. So I was like, absolutely. I was like, I'll go on whatever interview. Well, the universe, it was perfect. I went there. They hired me within five hours. So that's when you know the universe is working in your favors, when it happens fast and quick and it comes to you. So notice all the other times I tried to force it. I tried to go back to my old job. I tried to force to interview at another place. Um, and then this one was brought to me. It was a message. And then I entertained it and said, yes, I saw what happened. I got hired in five hours. And then I worked at that school and guess what happened? Because I created my mindfulness programs, you know, a year later, I had to create a program for elementary and middle school. Well, I had only taught the high school level for 14 years. So I had zero 
experience teaching elementary and middle school. The only experience I had with those age groups were my nieces and my nephews. And I remember going into that new teaching job being like, oh shit, it's six through 12. And I have sixth graders, seventh graders, and eighth graders. I have no idea how to teach them. I don't know how to have classroom management with sixth graders. They're probably going to run amok on me. <laughs> like I was like such a sweet, loving teacher that I would let kids kind of like, you know, be themselves in my room. I never had to be a drill sergeant. And oh my gosh, was that a learning experience? So it was painful that whole year, but then COVID hit. So it was like, I got some relief. I was like, okay, He's like this, the busy school day wasn't as draining because we were home. And, but that experience, I had to surrender and go work there, even though it was uncomfortable every single day I was adjusting and learning, but then I started to get these warm and fu fuzzy messages from my students. I created a meditation room for them. I brought them this new way of being, and I felt really proud of myself. Like I did something new. I created something on my own. And then a couple months later, I got this message to create this mindfulness program. And guess what the first thing they said was, are you comfortable teaching the middle school level? Because that's where we want the videos sent first. And I had this light bulb moment, like spirit is freaking awesome. Like I had just spent the last eight months teaching sixth, seventh and eighth graders. <laughs> and now I have this opportunity to create a program that could be spread all over the US for sixth, seventh and eighth graders and third through six. So I created one program for third through eighth grade. But without that experience, I would have never been able to sit down and film and be able to talk to the camera as if I was talking to my students who I just had experience teaching. So if you can see how life kind of, it brings us our next steps and we have to go with it, even though it's uncomfortable. So yes, I always talk about checking in with your body and making sure you're in the right spot and everything feels good, but sometimes we're in places and, and we can't get out for a reason. There's a lesson in it. There's something we need to learn before. It's like a stepping stone. It's a holding place. You're learning something because you're going to use what you're learning where you're at for your next endeavor, but you just can't see it yet. So hold the line, have faith. You're co-creating with spirit. And like I said, with my reading last night with that guy, like we have to be able to, like I wrote down that I wanted to reach more kids with my lessons. That was me dreaming up my dream. And then the universe brought me the opportunity to do it. And I had to be brave and say yes, even though it was one of those moments where you say yes and then you figure it out later. I had no idea how to film. I didn't even know like, how, how am I gonna get kids to meditate via a video? You know, I just didn't know how to do it, but it all just unfolded really beautifully. And now I'm still creating those, which it, I find that my greatest joy is filming. I love it. I love being able to reach more people by me just talking to my computer and it, it's able to reach like triple the amount of people. Like how awesome is that? So think about in your life, where do you think that you're being called to surrender and to let go and to not judge where you're at and just be there and trust that something is shaping you for something more. Don't grab the wheel. Don't try to run from it. Don't try to force your life to go in a different direction. Don't try to create the life of your dreams and then put yourself in a difficult situation, which I've done in the past. So just kind of like drop your shoulders and say, I'm here. I'm just going to be here. I'm going to find joy along the way. And I mean, if you think about it, I just was had a vision of me like December and January before I got my opportunity to create my videos. I was like a sitting duck. I was like, what am I doing with my life? I'm teaching, but I don't want to be doing this anymore. I'm, I want kids to still have my lessons, but I hate the hustle and bustle of the school day and parent emails and all that stuff that goes along with it. I just didn't like it anymore, but I had to be a sitting duck. I had to just go with it for now, for that, for the time being, because spirit had a better plan for me. So God has a better plan for all of us and we have to surrender. So I'm going to end this reading with some uh, charms to help us surrender a little bit more. And I hope you all get outside today if you're in uh, my neck of the woods in New Jersey, <laughs> because it's going to be beautiful out. I have the saints. There we go. We are being nurtured by our spirit family. And then we have the mermaid. I always think of this as just keep swimming. 
I don't know if you can see it, it's kind of blurry. Um, just keep swimming and don't think that the grass is greener. But if you're in a situation, this is the tough part because sometimes we're in situations where we have anxiety until we make a decision to leave that. So if you're in one of those situations where you're waking up every day knowing that you need, you know, you know exactly what you need to do, you just don't know how to do it, and you have anxiety every single day, that's usually an indicator that, you know, you really need to sit in silence and ask yourself and ask God, do I need to do this? Do I need to take action? Or God, are you going to do it for me? And you wait to hear the response. The response could be you, you turn on the TV and something says like divorce <laughs> or, you know, you're talking to a friend and they're talking about how they just broke up with their partner. Or if you're needing to move, you're all of a sudden going to get all these people talking to you about moving. That's your answer. And that's when you know it's safe to take action. And you, a prayer you can say is Archangel Michael, please change me into a woman or a man that can take action in order to relieve my suffering. Archangel Michael, please change me into a man or woman who can take action in order to relieve my suffering. Because if you're suffering, the decision that you make will relieve it. You will instantly have no more anxiety. So here's a quick example before I let you go. I had two months in between I got the offer to film and until I started film, filming, there was about two months where I had all these weird things happening. I was dating somebody that I shouldn't have been dating. Um, I was being called to break up and I wasn't listening. I got my wisdom teeth out and I was like, I need to be filming. Why did God make me get my wisdom teeth out? Um, so all these weird things were happening and I was waking up every day with anxiety, knowing that I needed to be filming. I needed to be I didn't know where to film. I was living at my brother's house. It was so much stress. And then moving into a new school year, being online, which we hadn't taught since March prior because teaching from home in 2020 was basically assigning Google assignments. We didn't really teach on Zoom. So now I'm being faced with all of these challenges all at once and it was terrible. And I totally just lost my train of thought. Thank you, spirit. Man, I hate when they do that. This is really sad, you guys. I'm sorry. I don't remember what I was, the whole point of that story was. I guess I'm not supposed to share it. But basically it was, oh, I remember, thank you, <laughs> the anxiety. So I had anxiety every single day leading up to that. The minute, the minute <laughs> I opened up my computer and my camera and I filmed one clip of my program, all of the anxiety went away. It was like, oh my gosh, that's all I needed to do all this time was just sit down and film one clip. And when, when I started filming, oh my gosh, it was like a flood. I just was like flooded with such good feelings and emotions. And I was excited and I couldn't wait to go film every single night. And it was all of a sudden, it was like that anxiety was leading me to make the decision to just do it just open the computer and just start filming or just break up with that person or just move out of that place. Making the decision sometimes, you know, I know we're talking about being patient and waiting, but sometimes when the anxiety is so bad, that's your body saying it's time. And there is a difference, right? There's high, high anxiety and you're suffering. You need to make a decision. If it's mild anxiety and you just have this little worry, it's not time yet. Your body will get you in, your body will make you very uncomfortable when it's time to move. Okay. And I feel like there's a lot of people making these moves right now. So you're not alone. Take a deep breath. I'm here. If you need me book a reading, book a session. If you're needing that guidance, I would love to pull cards and sit and talk with you. All right. Thanks for watching these morning messages. I will see you guys in the next one. Sending you so much love and light. Peace out.